And welcome, welcome to the Center for Conscious Living and this beautiful time together as uh, family and friends from uh, all over. Join us as we open our heart and just allow this beautiful thing called life to flow through us. I am so happy that you're here. I'm Reverend Carol Lawson and I am honored to be the one to be able to welcome you. We are, let's just mention that lovely and gorgeous Martha Creek, who is uh, joining us for the message today. And uh, welcome, Martha. <clears throat> Mer Mer <laughs> a little heart for you. Mary Reeves joined us from Washington. Cassandra's there from South Carolina. Lisa from North Carolina. I think I saw Lisa from Florida and a few other people. So just feel the field as we come together in this love and celebrating this glorious day. Lisa Minard is uh, one of our practitioners today, Reverend Al Bennett is, and our first practitioner is Reverend Sue Locke, who will do our opening invocation. Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Tidings of comfort and joy. Let's just take a breath together. Deep breath. Just breathe in that joy, the comfort of knowing that this community is so interconnected by grace. Just breathe that in, letting go on the out breath of anything unlike peace itself and just move with me in this moment into the glorious field of spirit's love as it washes over each one of us, acknowledging its divine presence in us, acknowledging its presence coming through us, acknowledging spirit's presence as us knowing as this service unfolds, we are so blessed. We are blessed by our founding minister and spiritual guide, Reverend Dr. Carol Lawson, whom we love and are so grateful for. By Lou's music, by the profound wisdom and presence of Martha Creek and each and every one who is with us here today, knowing that our hearts are open in this moment to the miracles and blessings that are here present in, through, and as us. And as our hearts accept that glorious energy of spirit, those ripples go out, never ending the divine blessings that flow through each one of us and through this service today. And so with profound thanksgiving and great love for each one, I just say, thank you, spirit. Thank you, life. And so it is. Amen. So it is. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, Reverend Sue. And uh, thank you in advance. Uh, we had a beautiful holiday concert last night with uh, uh, Jackie Greggs and Norman Taylor and Lou Doty. And here he is. Here I am. There is a still small voice within me It whispers things that always comfort me I am the love I am the peace within you Follow me
There is a spirit deep within me. It always speaks of truth and harmony. We are the same. There is no separation, follow me. There is a universe within me It tells me things no one would dare to say I am the life I am the resurrection, follow me, follow me, I am the way. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let me uh, call up Reverend Sue again to do our uh, inspirational reading and then affirmation, which will be in the chat by then. Thank you, Reverend Carol. Today's reading is from one of my very, very favorite works by Ernest Holmes, Living the Science of Mind. Do you wish to be happy? This is a foolish question. For who would not be happy? Someone has said that we used to think we had to be well in order to be happy, but now we know that we must be happy if we wish to be well. Happiness must be based on an inward sense of security, a sense of belonging to life and to each other, a desire to give, to be kind and compassionate, and to be able to put ourselves in the other person's position. Children are happy because they have not learned to be afraid. There can be no happiness where fear is. Bless the children playing on the shore. To them belongs the pipe of pan, the song of surf, the waves of roar, the fog, the wind, and freckled tan. No thought of care, no gain to reap, no fear of darkness, dread of night, no dream of turmoil in their sleep. Their evening star shines clear and bright. With hearts are filled with happy zest and joy for what the new day will bring, they lay them down in peace at rest. At morn for them, the lark will sing. They hail the day with wild delight, their feet in naked gladness shod, their eyes with wonder gleaming bright, for such is the kingdom of God. We are all children, not so much of a larger size as of a broader experience. There is a little boy or a little girl inside each one of us, a child just emerging from the unknown, meeting experiences and learning how to live. The spontaneous joy of the child playing on the shore the gladness of meeting the new day with the expectation of pleasure and the quiet peace of rest at night, untroubled by inward conflicts. These are what we are all longing for. This is what faith does for us. It makes no difference what form it takes as long as it is sincere. Somewhere along the line, we shall be called to make this surrender and again become as children. Our attempt to become happy will be futile without this. It matters not what we possess or what ambitions we entertain. We are so constituted that we are incomplete until we are consciously united with ourselves, with that which is whole and perfect. Can we learn to to surrender all of our doubts and fears, 
our uncertainties and our forebodings? Can we live our lives with enthusiasm, expectancy, and confidence? I venture to say that could we learn to do this, our inner conflicts would dissipate themselves. Our prophetic feelings of evil would vanish and we should be at peace with God, with ourselves and with others. And so if you'll go to the chat and read with me our affirmation. Today I turn within to the divine spark Acknowledging the truth of our oneness with God. I celebrate the light within and I give thanks for all that is. I am filled with the light, love and peace of God and all is well in my world right now. And so it is. And so it truly is. Thank you, Reverend Sue. And it is now my uh, great delight to uh, introduce uh, someone that uh, you <laughs> probably know if you've been here at all. She's been with us several times, adding her wisdom and her joy and her spark of delight and her humor and uh, uh, just whatever light flows through her. Uh, you know, Martha Creek has uh, uh, it, other in other years uh, <laughs> spent her time going to churches all over uh, this country and beyond uh, sharing this wisdom that she has. This beautiful year, she's uh, been allowed to land and is just flowing that wisdom right through her from her, uh, her home for this year at least, right, in uh, Kentucky. So the Reverend Dr. Martha Creek. Uh, precious, 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 precious people. I stand in awe very often and I often pray that I won't lose that awe, the awe. And we think about awe certainly at a time like this where we have a little more access to awe. But as I think about this and look around at all of these faces as you came in here, and it's like the energy that I've been holding that I absolutely hold for each and every one of us today, you today, is an energy of Christ consciousness, of the born today, born again today. And this morning I thought, this is not about a baby Jesus. This is about an adult Jesus. <laughs> this is about, yes, there was a baby Jesus. Yes, there was a baby Jesus. And yes, we celebrate the baby Jesus. And yes, there's also an adult Jesus. There's an adult Martha, an adult Carol, and enough Joe, Sue, Lisa, Peggy, Sherry, Ann, Mom, Mary, Reed, Marlene, Elise, Lisa, like an adult of us that says, okay, we're not babies. We're not babies. And wisdom keepers, sages, seers, conscious, awakened, enlightened, enlightening, and living this. So as Reverend Sue read, living the science of mind, living the Christ consciousness, living the Buddha consciousness, living the higher power consciousness, whatever yours is. But it's like, well, I will as soon as they all do. As soon as they all quit acting like knuckleheads, I'll be more Christ-like. Well, let's, let's look at what that's got us, shall we, <laughs> for a minute, but not too long because <laughs> it could really take our Christmas joy away. But to say, okay, today, right here and right now, if you are Christed on this very call on December 20, 2020, 12, 20, 2020, you became the Christed, you became the Buddhist, Buddhisted, if you became the awakened one, the enlightened one, what would you do differently today? What would you actually let go today? <laughs> What would you stop referencing from the past? 
what experience would you stop identifying as or identifying with? What would you believe is possible? from a Christ consciousness, from the born again and the spirit of Advent to bring in light, enlightenment, to bring in lighter, lighter experiences, lighter days lighter thoughts, lighter responses, lighter reactions. Who would you be? Get a sense of how it would feel, how you imagine it would feel to be in Christ consciousness. What you've studied for, prayed for, practiced for, recited for, read for, treated for, meditated for. What if it's now? What if it actually is today? What would you do differently today? Now, see, if you start practicing this, the people in your house will think you're on a new medication. So you may have some splaining to do. Actually, it's just a a shift in my consciousness. (laughs) It's actually, you know, all those books that's piled up on that bookshelf behind my head. I just started applying them today. You know, all that science of mind work I've been doing for 30 years. I started applying it today. And then choice by choice by choice, situation by situation, interaction by interaction. I'm going to live the science of mind in this interaction. I'm going to respond from a Christed consciousness in this interaction. I'm going to pause and get myself right minded before I fire off that email or that text or roll my eyes or first things first. So get a sense of it in your body. And a sense of then the today that there's something that'll have to be emptied out. Something that means um, a kenosis, a letting go, a self-emptying. And it, that has been the way of all the master teachers, whoever yours is, the, there's some reference in there to self-emptying of purification. So any spirituality then has a sense of this, that I cannot be what I am. I cannot be as aligned with my true nature. I cannot be in the height of the Christed consciousness with all this other. So something that needs to be subtracted, let go, shed, dissolved, evolved. What is that for you? Only you know. And if after today, in this awakening we're having right here in this highly auspicious time, this this day of convergence, this day of the star coming in, this day that hasn't happened in ever, 
but notably even scientifically for hundreds of years for eons that today is that day of auspiciousness that, that this is the day that I choose a different life for myself. And it's not going to be now about adding anything and adding something else and adding something else and adding something else without some emptying out, some letting go. And the quote that Reverend Dr. Carroll used in the introduction for today's talk is from a mystic Meister Eckhart that said, God is not found in the soul by adding anything, but by a process of subtraction. So true spiritual wisdom reveals that actually less is more. Jesus taught it. The holy ones have discovered it, all of them in one way or the other. Dalai Lama, Nelson Mandela, Dorothy Day, generations of nuns, Ernest Holmes, who have taught this in some way. And sadly, many of us still think um, we're going to find it magically somehow, <laughs> or that if we just open the book or scratch below the surface or something that it's there versus this comes as Lou sang so beautifully from the depth of our soul, from the depth of what we know for sure. And that longing to clarify this, this longing to express this, this longing for our essential nature um, doesn't sleep, doesn't sleep. So how would you meet that longing today? How could you meet that longing today? And for the sake of you, and for the sake of you living in a new consciousness, in a higher consciousness, what would you say that's just enough of that? I've entertained that just enough. I've referenced that just enough. I've identified with that just enough. And today, now let's call this the gospel, shall we? That we got some gospel this morning. And that is that I stopped trying to manufacture my own worthiness by any kind of performance or anything else that my worthiness is inherent, that it is an eight instead and that I will never bring forth the Christed part of myself, the Christ nature in me, if I'm seeking to uh, manufacture worthiness or value or power or respect or anything else so that it is actually, literally, spiritually an inside work, an inside job. So get a sense then today, if you ceased looking to anybody or anything as proof of your worthiness, if you stopped looking to people, to jobs, to professions, to family, to relationships, to make you worth something.
what would that be like? And what if then today, this Christmas, this Christmas, this Christmas time is no longer about thinking about the birth of a baby Jesus as the coming of the Christ. And we awaken then as Advent leads us to reveal more about that, preparing myself, preparing yourself, preparing ourselves for the Christ to come in personal contracted, unmistakable, visible form as you, as me. And what trust would that take? What trust will that take in you and in me that could allow such a greatness to be, to allow such a greatness to focus and communicate a Christ consciousness through this human body and through your human body. What, what trust and faith and devotion and dedication will it take in you and in me to allow this greatness, to allow this light to shine, to allow this expression? So then modeling the entire divine pattern of incarnation, the entire divine pattern of love, of wisdom, of faith, of zeal, of will, of imagination, of power, of strength. To generate, to cause, to be cause, And if we learn then, if we awaken today, that we stop some of this managing and maneuvering and manipulating or believing that we can, <laughs> our spiritual energy, then it's a matter of letting go and receiving what is given freely of letting go and aligning with what that has already been given freely that is our nature that is inherent in us and then this gradual emptying of our attachments to this smaller self this identified self that there is room now make room for new conception new birth new reality new experience new life and you know life wins Life wins, life has its way, life unfolds. So we can go in with our nails dug in, <laughs> screeching, or we can go in with, yeah, life unfolding. And I've read a few things this week that awakened me again. And one was crisis proceeds, crisis precedes, transformation and that came through my transitions class that I was looking and working with and that's a quote in my manual from Barbara Marks Hubbard so some of you have known her and studied with her and she used to say when people would say oh Barbara you know are you going to slow down you're 85 you're 83 years she would say I know I'm getting newer and newer and newer I know I'm getting newer and newer and newer. So what if we got newer today? Regardless of the situation, regardless of the diagnosis, regardless of who didn't invite us to their parties, regardless of our age, if we were newer today. The other quote, and I don't know where it came from, but I wrote down, there must be displacement before there will be any replacement displacement and some of you are experiencing some displacement right now and it don't feel good sometimes does it and it's very very scary sometimes displacement but think about meeting that displacement 
from a higher consciousness from like, of course I'd have sadness. Of course I'm attached to this. Of course I didn't get my way. And I'm going to elevate this to see how I would see this from a different archetypical mind, from a different side of my mind, a different place in my mind that then following that displacement is replacement that will require a great deal of surrender, a great deal of letting go. And I used, I've even told teachers over the course of my path, if they told me to let go one more time, I was going to bite them. Because if I could let go, believe me, I would have already, you know, let go and let God. It's like, well, tell your face because it ain't, you ain't let go either yet. It don't look like. So um, let's, so I accept then that letting go is a process, letting go is a practice and there's ways and means, things that have helped. And I'll be launching into that in 2021 with David Hawkins' work, Letting Go, The Pathway to Surrender. You're all welcome to join that. It's on the website if you want information. So nowhere in our teaching, nowhere in our teaching is there any mention of moral worthiness, achievement, things like that, other than humble, humility, trust, and surrender, then we get in contact with, in a consciousness, in alignment with our inherent worthiness, our inherent value, our innate power, our innate wisdom. And then a little relief can come. A little relief can come as we stop trying to manage God or manage the process or manage manufacturing our worthiness. And as long as we continue to do the impossible, the unattainable, then we're not in principle to give birth to the Christ, to give birth to the Christ consciousness that all the energy is spent over there instead of going deeper and deeper and deeper into the well. So what have you learned from your teachings? What do you know for sure from the teachings? So as you take pause here, whoever's your teacher, Ernest Holmes, the Fillmores, Buddha, Jesus, Carol Lawson, hear the voice of your teacher. What's the message? What is your Christmas gift? What are you being given again today? To remember, to remember your guiding principle. And Imagine then what it would look like as our material world and our spiritual worlds converge, that our material world and our spiritual lives, our material lives and our spiritual lives coincide, align within that convergence, within that coming together is the birth of the Christ, 
There is the Christ. There is the Christ consciousness. Teachers, Jesus, others fully accepted the human divine identity. It's both. So the coming again, whenever we are able to see the spiritual and the material worlds aligned, coexisting in any moment, in any situation, in any event, in any person, all matter reveals spirit. And spirit needs matter to show itself. So then it's not just at Christmas, but the forever coming of Christ. The infinite coming of Christ, the infinite coming of consciousness, the infinite arising of consciousness. Then it happens whenever and wherever we allow this to be utterly true for us. When you allow this to be utterly true for you. And this is how God continually breaks into history and continually breaks into consciousness and it continually breaks, shines forth, comes forth into relationships, into interactions, into organizations, into transitions, into displacement and replacement and whatever is new. So humanity is God's creation. Goodness, what was God thinking? And humanity alone Humanity is called to cooperate with God in the creation. Humanity, only humanity, humanity is it. You, me, humanity is called to cooperate, co-create, co-align, co-express God in the creation. So how will you do this? To be pointed in a new direction, to shed a skin, to no longer be blind, the amazing grace of no longer being blind or acting blind, even in places we're not blind to still continue to act blind, pretend that we're blind. So another word I got for today is, <laughs> I've never even heard it, so whole maker. Those who are to do this are whole makers, uniting what is scattered, united what is dispersed, united what is fragmented, united what has been leaked off, united whole makers, make whole, wholeness, wholeness, to create a deeper unity with spirit, a deeper unity in God, to give birth to this the God in us, the Christ consciousness in us and in, in our own life. And then with providence, grace, midwife, a divinity in an evolving cosmos to midwife this birth of the Christ in a consciously evolving way. So we are the whole makers of the world. See if you can say that out loud or silently. I am a whole maker. I'm a whole maker. I'm here to make whole my divinity and my humanity. I'm here to make whole the expressing of this to the world, through the world, for the world. And that we're no longer under any kind of spell that um, 
or any kind of dependence on the teachers. Like the teachers taught, the teachers taught, the teaching is here, the teaching is in me. The teaching is me. So the good news, the gospel is in living this, in celebrating this, God's invitation, Spirit's invitation to participate in God's universal creative work in the unfolding of it, and then to cause and generative, generatively cause, purposefully cause, intentionally cause what we can. One great act of giving birth, daily acts of giving birth, a universal Christ, a universal Christedness. So born again today, intentionally letting go Dropping some hot potatoes. Dropping some identity, dropping some references, dropping some uh, personifications. Dropping some old tired practices maybe. So the reverence of our own heart, the reverence and the devotion of our own becoming. Lift it up. Our own star of Bethlehem. You as the star of Bethlehem. Martha as the star of Bethlehem. Imagine. We begin again today. We do so on purpose. We do so knowing and believing. Deepest bow to you and sincere, wholehearted thanks for being whole makers and for leading humanity, divinity's expression as truth, as light of love for the world and to the world. And my greatest wholehearted love to each and every one of you. So be it. So be it. For behold, I make all things new. Thank you, Martha. Thank you. God bless. Thank you very much. Hmm. Reverend Paul. The uh, offertory blessing is in the chat room. If you'll join with me in reading the offertory blessing. Thank you, God, for this abundance that is mine to share. I bless this gift and give it to thee in gratitude and joy knowing that as I give, I do receive. And so it is. And then, of course, the perfect song following Martha's talk, Lou, with his <laughs> life's brilliant songs through him deep within me. my tongue
universes seeing with my eyes deep within me I am thinking universal mind See this infant looking back at me Deep within me Seeing infants wander and wandering what it sees Deep within me my love in the pouring rain deep within me making love waking up and making love again yeah Hydrogen clouds giving birth to stars. Oh, deep within me, we are love and intelligence. And its consequence Universes seeing with my eyes, oh, deep within me, I am thinking universal mind. Thank you, Lou. Yes, mm, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's all unfolding beautifully. We uh, have a blessing that we uh, used to share with people that might be joining us for the first time. Now we share it with each other. Today, I ask you to share it as the Christed one with all of these people you will see on Zoom here and each one beyond that as we raise our arms in blessings and say, welcome to this Center for Conscious Living. We are a heart-centered spiritual community and we open ourselves to you in love. We recognize the perfection of God within you. We celebrate the joyous being that you are. You are a radiant point of light and we are blessed by your presence. Welcome home. So many different levels of meaning as we do that, how 
very beautiful. We, uh, have a few uh, announcements to share. Um, and I, I keep looking, uh, Mary Reed, is there a, a message? Your message was uh, on my mind uh, this morning a lot, may all know love. Uh, but I just, uh, in case there's something you would like to say, you can as well. Thank you very much and good morning. Good morning. Martha, I have to say it's a pleasure to hear um, you speak. I've, I've heard about you for a long time. So I woke up this morning thinking, well, it's the Sunday before Christmas. It will be nice to get some heart-centered nourishment. And so it was a treat to come on here and uh, it's your day. So thank you for your message. It's a pleasure. Um, uh, yeah, I will just mention that um, uh, throughout this year, this incredible year, um, I spoke about when I was the speaker back in October, a bunch of teachings that came through um, an arena full of divine beings known as consensus. And consensus has guided uh, me and my private Patreon community through an incredible series of teachings, ultimately coming into exactly what Martha was talking about today, the visceral experience of knowing the teacher within me, that Christ within me. And um, so all of those teachings became an official course that I'm launching on January 5th called Divine New Being, because being is the new doing. And uh, if you go to my website, unwittingmystic.com, and click on courses, you'll see the course there. And there's a testimonial video that um, I strongly recommend that you watch. You'll, you'll find a couple of familiar faces on there from your community here. And uh, it's a four-month course entirely led by the channel teachings. And I will do 11 live sessions with consensus as part of that teaching. And ultimately, it's all leading you right back into yourself, into that Christ within you. And you'll see in the testimonial videos, one of the favorite teachings that people talk about is the embodying the teachers, the divine teacher here with and through and as me. And that's what this whole course is about. So um, it's limited to 50 people and there's about 20 slots still left. Oh, registration just opened three days ago. So I would really love to have people that are familiar already with me and my energy and the teachings to be part of that. Um, so, and I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a wonderful, happy 2021. It's exciting to have this momentum going into the new year. So it's been a pleasure to spend so much time with all of you in this incredible year as well. And blessings all the way around. Big love to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. So we have in this community such light and um, such love available, just reminding us, just reminding us. The birth of the Christ is each moment, each choice, each decision. So if you'd like to be on our mail list and uh, you are not, why uh, please uh, either put your name and email address in the chat or uh, write to CCL in Moorestown at AOL. Uh, Paul probably will put that up and uh, you can get on our mail list. Uh, the things coming up, we have a Christmas Eve service, December 24th at 6.30 in the evening. Uh, and uh, Elizabeth Nauer uh, has uh, arranged some lovely things. I know both Jackie Greggs and Norman Taylor are involved and there may be a violin and a flute and uh, the practitioners are all sharing uh, gifts with you as we move into being whole makers and uh, so that's a beautiful thing we invite you to bring a candle uh, with you if it's a uh, uh, convenient or appropriate uh, and in your setting and uh, spend Christmas Eve with us it was a beautiful concert last uh, night and you, with such a feeling of uh, family and connection uh, that we are yearning for, uh, just completely uh, let go of any sense of separation and that will happen again Christmas Eve, I'm sure. 
Uh, we also, uh, next Sunday, Reverend Paul is sharing a message. And then on December 31st, we have two things, the World Peace Prayers at 7 a.m. Uh, we will spend an hour in prayers for peace. Uh, we'll put out on uh, Monday or Tuesday uh, Zoom links for Christmas Eve for um, the World Peace Prayers at 7 a.m. It's coordinated with Greenwich Mean Time. So um, it, uh, as I said, when I first came here, don't talk to me about 7 a.m. I came from California where we did it at 4 a.m. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, then we we'll have a visioning as well for the community as we open to co-create as Martha so elegantly and eloquently and beautifully stated with uh, the universe. And that uh, visioning is open to any and all. And it's from four to 5.30 on December 31st. Uh, Reverend Julie Fisher will um, lead it. And uh, well, she'll, she'll be there facilitating, I guess uh, the divine will lead it. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, I don't know what else there is. Uh, oh, if, if, if you're, uh, um, have been a member of the Center for Conscious Living and would like to be, it, we uh, traditionally had a membership renewal during this time. Please send your name into, again, our office address, CCL in Morristown, C-C-L-I-N Morristown at AOL.com for that. Uh, anything else? And, and you're looking in that, like, I, I'm, am I supposed to say something else? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, thank you, uh, Martha, and thank you, Mary. Um, I, I just wanted to step forward to, um, there's a lot going on and, and we've all got a lot of opportunities, but I just wanna um, everyone to, to, to really think about how to put into practice this whole maker message, this power, powerful message today by thinking about joining us. I just wanna welcome everyone to join us at four o'clock, you just announced it on New Year's Day, where- New Year's Eve Day. Oh, I'm sorry, New Year's Eve Day, thank you. Thank you, New Year's Eve Day. And it's just an opportunity to do exactly what we all just experienced, which is step into that, to that field where we say, what's, our, what's the highest iteration here? What's the, how do you wanna move through? What, what, what do we wanna birth? And Reverend Carol has, has brought us here and we are all gonna go through this transition to our beloved, beloved community. And I just really wanna invite everyone. I wanna invite Martha and I wanna invite Mary if they too wanna just, just be a little part of this visioning that we do New Year's Eve day at four o'clock to just, just come together. And you don't have to know what all that means. You just bring you and, and that will be a, a, a fulsome gift. So I just wanted to reiterate that, thank you. Thank you very much. And Anne, uh, you and Sherry won the uh, best background decoration last night at the holiday concert, I just want to say. And now we also need somebody to win the uh, holiday basket that we have with, uh, I don't know, wine and massages and goblets and signs and cards and a whole bunch of things. Marlene, are you with us and ready to do that? I am. And uh, last week I had my helper, but I hope we're still in bed. So y'all gonna have to be, you know, knowing the mom that the divine is picking the card. All right. And this da -da 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 -da. the winner of the second holiday basket is Regina. <laughs> Regina. Regina. De Barberi, our new uh, Stewardship Council president and uh, uh, a, a busy light in the, involved in many, many, many things. So how perfect it is uh, that the universe uh, gifted uh, one of its beloved, which are all in front of me as well. And we'll so, have, we have some other, um, some other gift certificates and stuff, gift certificates and stuff that we will be offering um, in the new year and part of a Valentine's Day basket. So stay tuned. Stay tuned indeed. And uh, while you're tuned in and uh, revved up, uh, Mr. Lou Doty is gonna share some more truth with us. Hello, hello. Okay, ready? 
CCL National Anthem. God is all there is. All there is is God. Raise a voice in devotion. All there is is God. God is all. is all there is, all there is is love, raise my arms, I adore you, all there is is love. my arms, I adore you, give my life, I surrender, all I need is God, God is all there, <laughs> sorry, Excuse me. <clears throat> God is in every cough. I cough so much. Our parrot now coughs. It's wonderful. Thank you, Lou. Thank you. And Reverend Sue. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Something wonderful is happening to me right now. It is this thing called CCL. It is this thing called life. Life is in my body. Life is in my mind. Life is in my feelings. Life is in all my activities. And I receive it. I share it. I am it. And I accept it just the way that it is. Thank you, CCL. Thank you, life. And accepting all of these gifts, we say, yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you, Marfa, beautiful, Girl. glorious message. Thank you, everyone that uh, supported the service and each person that <clears throat> joined and is choosing to uh, be born anew this very moment. God bless you all. Thank you, Reverend. Yeah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Martha. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you, Martha. Martha. Congratulations, Regina. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Deborah. Nice to see everyone. Kathy Wake up. Hey, Holly Myers. How are you? Hey, yeah, Merry Christmas, everybody. Check out Merry Christmas. Hey. Hi, Hi. Hi. Happy Hi. week. Hi. I'm back in the U.S. Yeah. Hey. 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 This is great. Hi, uh, Stephen. Hi, <laughs> Joanne Holmes. Good to see you. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe, Kalina. Hi, Hi, everyone. Hi, Michael. Love and light. Hey, Ellen. 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 Hey,
Bye. All right. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye -bye. Love you all. Have a good week. Bye. Right. Love, you. Love you. Thursday. See you Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas, everyone. Love and blessings. Love soon. Thanks. Love, Love you all. You. Merry, merry. Oh, Chuck and Felicia. Hi, Holly. <laughs> Hi, Holly. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Hey, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hey, Reverend Al. Hi, Hi Holly. Holly. Yes. <laughs> Thank Hi, you Peggy. again, Martha. How are you? Hi, Lynn. Yeah. Oh, you. You're so welcome. All of you, you're so welcome. Anything in the world I can ever do to support you. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Martha. Martha. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. You're welcome. It's so nice to have you part of the family, Martha. I I I think so too. When I heard um Martha Mary, Martha Mary, Martha Mary. Oh, yeah. oh that confirms that you're all Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Martha Mary and the rest are Jesus. Martha and Mary. Exactly yeah. Right. And the and the, the family of the divine. Mm -hmm. How perfect. Thank you very much. Martha's uh, email is in the uh her website is in the chat. Yeah. Um, and please look it up. She has wonderful things and glorious offerings as well. Bye, everybody. Uh, hey, Debbie. Happy Christmas Eve. Hi, uh, Debbie. Jack and Felicia, too. Yay. Yeah, bye. Yeah, Have a good bye. Christmas. Uh, uh, bye. Hi, Chuck. Felicia. Blessed Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Christmas. And enjoy the solstice. Yes. Oh, Not only my daughter's birthday, but all of the convergence and the uh, openness and the awareness. Uh, the Star of Bethlehem. But we won't see it. Well, 2020. 20. Happy birthday to your daughter, Reverend Carol. Thank you, Stephen. I'll tell her. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Huh. I'm here till the end. I know what I'm looking <laughs> for here. I want to stop the recording, but I can't find.